You're listening to Rudy Radio, powered by Rude Rangers Entertainment. I, Tara Renee, from the African American Woman in Cinema Organization. And this is Talk with Tara, a show that highlights fantastic filmmakers, artists, and entrepreneurs from all walks of life. We're committed to introducing you to individuals, organizations, and projects of which you're not necessarily aware. And we do this with the intention of uplifting, empowering, and enlightening you. If you can, please share this episode on all your social media platforms. We'd also love it if you text your friends and ask them to tune in. Well, today, audience, get ready because you're about to have an experience of a lifetime. My guest is the powerhouse who is blowing this country apart with his incredible cinematic work. None other than Mr. Demos. Demos, welcome, welcome, welcome to Talk With Tara. How are you today, sir? I, I, I am doing fine. Um, I'm so excited. We, we can't believe just how many areas this film has been number one. And here we are on the number one show as well. So, <laughs> so, so there's a whole lot of winning going on right now. Tara. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I tell you, uh, I'm just grateful uh, for you. And we have your wife on Miss Tiffany. Uh, another powerhouse and you all are just doing great and mighty work in the area of film and it is such uh not only is it needed but it's so inspirational and i thank you so much both of you uh certainly from the bottom of my heart as the president of a film organization it's just so great to see you both but what got you started into filmmaking well, um, I always, you know, loved movies and mm -hmm. I still to this day have a big love for black and white movies. I was the oh. only one in my house <laughs> as a kid that stayed right next to my mother and uh. watched all these black and white movies. And I started to pick up from a kid. I would tell just wow. from the trailer, I could tell people that's going to be a good movie. Uh, that's going to be a bad wow. movie. And every time I realized I was right. Mm. And uh, so then um, I went to school, got a master's degree in mm. storytelling and oh, in wow. writing and, and focused on, you know, th that whole area of content. Then being mentored, you know, mm. by some, some people that are not alive anymore, but many of the great directors in Hollywood I've studied for years mm. from David Lean to Stanley mm. Kubrick and wow. many others in their style of making movies and uh also you know we love the work of of spike lee and and do the mm -hmm. right thing and and malcolm x in particular mm -hmm. so those are some of my mm -hmm. favorite films that that he did throughout <laughs> the years and mm -hmm. um and we just knew i married a, my wife who mm -hmm. you know studied theater so mm -hmm. when she when the two of us became one my whole <laughs> house got filled with acting books and theater <laughs> books and all these kind of books <laughs> as we mix libraries together. So, so I, I, let's just say I was born in the work, you know? <laughs> well, that is truly, truly awesome. So can you tell the audience, what was your first film? Um, my first film was the movie Emmanuel. Woo! That was, uh, wow. It was about the church shooting in mm -hmm. Charleston, South Carolina. My mm. wife and I heard about that shooting and we flew in just to, to, to meet victims, to pray for victims, mm. to encourage them and to mm -hmm. try to raise money to help them out. Mm. And, you know, a year later, we met a great director by the name of Brian Ivey. And mm -hmm. then that, that grew into me coming on as executive producer with mm. Steph Curry, Viola Davis, and many others. Wow. And uh, after my hard work on the set and all the stuff we were doing to make it, mm -hmm. uh, they bumped me up to to one of the lead producers. So wow. that was that was uh, a huge honor to uh, mm. to be labeled that. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful. And I tell you, that film, I, I tell you, after watching it, totally ransacked my emotions. I'm going to tell you that much. Totally ransacked my emotions. But it is a powerful, powerful piece, you know. Yeah. And and so, so from that, uh, you went on to do another film. Could you tell the audience about that? film is my directorial debut called mm. Chicago America's mm -hmm. Hidden War mm -hmm. and um, that that came about by traveling into Chicago hearing that there were more people killed there than Afghanistan and Iraqi mm. war put together as American casualties and that blew my mind I mean I remember I I, I unfortunately got caught up in the drug world as a young uh, teenager, even before that, I started selling drugs at age 11. And wow. I broke my family's heart. Yeah, my mother was a, can you imagine this, Tara? My mother was a principal of an elementary school in Queens, New York. And my what? father was a captain on Rikers Island. And mm. I got caught up in wanting to make that, wanting to make the money. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing that movie Scarface mm. uh, that Oliver Stone did had a very mm -hmm. negative impact on my life. And and mm. uh, I started chasing after the money. So when 30 of my friends were killed and dead, mm. and I realized I lived through the city being wow. the murder capital, I wanted to go out there and help Chicago not be the murder capital anymore. Wow. Any that is a fascinating story. I want to get back to the film, but now that you brought that part up, uh, because we have all different types of uh, audience members, and a lot of them are young, uh, Dimas, who listens to this show. And so I, I feel that it's important just to talk a little bit about uh, what you just made mention, just by the way of, of inspiring and helping some young people who are making decisions at this stage in their life. So... Um, that is a fascinating story. And I understand you wrote a book about that. Did you? Yeah, I wrote a, I wrote a best-selling book called Street God. Um, mm. that is now, now being developed into a television show. Wow. And, uh, so that was, that was, uh, my memoir of me in the drug world and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and coming out of that lifestyle. And it's mm -hmm. one of the number one books uh that that different people love to read law enforcement study it uh wow. families buy it for their for their young people and and mm -hmm. it has a huge following in jails across the country and uh, and mm. translated into languages around the world as well yeah. wow Some dutch and fetish and more mm -hmm. that is amazing that how long did you stay in that world I was in that world from age 11 to about age 23. Really? And, uh, yeah, I've been shot. I was arrested over 13 times. Oh, um, I, I, had to, I had to escape with handcuffs to get away from the police. Wow. Um, mm. I, I, I outsmarted the feds, you know, twice. Mm. And, and God's grace rescued me right mm -hmm. before I could have been doing uh, many, many years in prison. So, mm -hmm. so he mm -hmm. rescued me right at the right time. Wow. Wow. And we need to share with the young people that, you know, although we understand some of this may be glamorous, but there is a serious price to pay. And in the end, it's not worth it. Yeah, to totally. I mean, look now, I went from a crack dealer to a filmmaker. So, mm. you know, I, ho I hope that will encourage them that mm -hmm. where they are right now in their lives doesn't mm -hmm. have to be where they will be some years from now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. Well, we certainly appreciate you shedding light on that. And we know that it will help some young listener uh, as they make decisions in life. It's always the right time to do the right thing. And we've all been put here for a purpose, and that is to help one another and to make this a more better society and leave it in, in a more better shape than when you came uh, into this world. I want to talk more about 
the making of your recent film because it is taking this country by storm. How long did it take you to make it? What were some of the <laughs> aha moments and oh my goodness, what am I doing moments? <laughs> well, that, that's, a, that's a really great question. So um, we filmed, we, it took 53 days to film it. So we Damn. had five, 500 hours worth of footage. Wow. And, uh, and, and to get to condense that into mm -hmm. an hour and 45 minutes uh, was a long process of around 10 months. Mm. And um, we, 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 as a matter of fact, I'm sorry, it was a little over a year, about a year mm -hmm. and a year, a year and four months, about 14 months altogether, because mm -hmm. we started out with one editor that mm -hmm. um, didn't work out. Uh, we didn't mm -hmm. like the direction it was going. Mm -hmm. And then we had to start fresh with, uh, with, with another editor. And, mm -hmm. um, and that took, that took the film to the next level. And we were perfectionists. So we were going over it and going yeah. over it and going over <laughs> it night after night, after, after night, after mm -hmm. night. And mm -hmm. that, that was a real, real painful <laughs> experience. <laughs> but, uh, well, well, Mr. Yeah. Demos, we, we, we have to take a commercial. Uh, we'll be right back, but we're going to continue with where we left off. You're listening to Talk with Tara, presented by African American Woman in Cinema, right here on Rudy Radio. Vera Moore Cosmetics and Skincare was formed to empower all women to feel great about themselves for more than just a moment. When it comes to a flawless complexion, skincare is the key. Vera More Cosmetics and Skincare is for women of all ages and skin tones. Be the more fabulous woman you were born to be. I am Madame Francois, and I'm introducing my new luxury skincare brand that's available to you at an attainable price. Discover my beauty secrets, luxurious, effective ingredients with proven results, and a price tag that doesn't break the bank. Come indulge with me at lesmadamefrancois.com. We need some vigilante crew. I'm going to tell you what we need. So these little old jokers run around who shoot us, you gotta take them all, uh, snip applies, cut their shooting fingers off. Chicago is back in the national news. With 74 people shot and 12 fatalities, this is now one of the bloodiest weekends on record. Citizens of the city can't let their kids walk on the street, be on the front stairs even. It's a little boy that I know, he's three, four, five years old. He's been shot twice. There were so many bullet holes, and she was bleeding from everywhere. Violence is the manifestation of our public policy feelings across the board. And this this is sad, man. 11-year-old is shot. Boom, 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 boom. And a 17-year-old is shot in the face and dead. I'm thinking to myself, I could be the next one to get shot. Dead. Anyway, right here. Gone. And angled. Forever. It is the world. And that Taliban war is even worse. Facts. It's worse, man. Formula One driver. I spent to get to Long Island Telecom before they closed. I need to get one of these fantastic deals that Long Island Telecom has because you can't beat the price anywhere else. Oh, get away from that car. What are you doing? Freaking kids playing with the car out there. Anyway, I'm glad I got here. Wait, what do you mean you're closing? I got to come back tomorrow? What's your number? 631-833-9679? Oh, stop writing me a ticket. 
Welcome back to Talk with Tara. I am Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema. And today we are talking with the powerhouse filmmaker, Mr. Demos. And he was just telling us before we went on break his process of this new film, Chicago. So please, Demos, continue. Yeah, so, um, you know, we, 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 we've shot the film mm -hmm. in somewhere between 14 months. We went mm -hmm. through two editorial processes, and then um, it was a long grind because one of the things that I realized is the mistake that amateur filmmakers make mm -hmm. is they rush through the process. Mm. And we wanted to use symbolism, so the film has mm -hmm. a lot of... Uh, really thought out symbolism. It has colors that we use for different mm. purposes and, and reasons. Um, the texture, we got a guy to do the music who's the social justice music person, professor at Berkeley. So wow. every last thing that someone is experiencing in this film, there was a great uh, uh, a method and thought to why it is the way it is. So, uh, so there's no, there's no mistakes when you <laughs> see something or you hear something or something's bleeped out. It's not by accident. It's either we're saving someone's life because they mm -hmm. said their, their home address or we're okay. repeating something that is so powerful that it needs to be heard twice. So, uh, some people may like, wow, I thought I just, just heard that. You know, the woman says, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, my sons were killed 16 and 17 years old, 16 wow. and 17 years old. We wanted that to sink in while she's mm -hmm. holding the pictures of, of, of the children she loved. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That is power. That's power. And I, yeah. I mm -hmm, go, I, well, I have another question, but I'm just so in the moment and, and just in terms of how you stated you structured the entire film and that is phenomenal what was the, the was there one particular message that you wanted this film to bring home to the audience or did you i i you know i heard how you say how you brought every intricate piece together and every piece have something significant to say but is there one particular message is this all a chorus to that one particular message that you wanted to bring out or or what exactly uh did you want it to wanted this particular method to do yeah so i i think you know what has happened with with film with documentary film people is they've made cinema cinema verite uh, uh too much of an idol you mm -hmm. know for me for for, for mm -hmm. my liking they all, mm -hmm. they all move the same. They sound the same. You're following two or three people. You're trying to be a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. and, and when we come together, and it's like when we come together as groups, uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we brag about it. I'm in those groups. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did this movie, Cinema Verite, Cinema Verite, Cinema mm -hmm. Verite. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm trying to break in a, a new style uh -huh. of telling the story of the city when mm. you feel like you 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 are in a guerrilla kind of journalism moment inside mm. of the chaos of the city and mm -hmm. i want you to walk away realizing that there is a real war going on mm -hmm. and it's not chicago new york city in its worst days doesn't come close to chicago new wow. orleans Crips and Bloods, I don't care who you name, they mm -hmm. do not come close to the genocidal mindset that has taken over our kids, our young people, mm -hmm. our beautiful Black and Latino and, and uh, uh, young people are shooting each other in such a way that now they cross lines. They will kill your kids. They will kill wow. your girlfriend. They'll shoot your mother. They will wow. shoot anybody that's in sight. And that cannot continue unchecked. Oh my unchecked. lord! Well, what, what is there a root cause of the of the the shooting? I know some of it is gang activity, drugs, but are those the two prevalent 
causes that you found when you went to Chicago? What is the root cause for all of this? It, it, it goes back, you know, Chicago, it's, it's so layered. Number one, mm -hmm. Chicago doesn't, doesn't solve murders well. That's number wow. one. Number two, um, the policing is not going at the highest level because they broke trust in those communities with years by the police used to turn over their informants when they used to get paid off by the drug dealers. So what? it has a well-known uh, culture that if you are an informant, there's a high probability you're going to get killed. So people do oh. not cooperate. Then you have uh, more politicians arrested in Chicago than any other place in the nation. You know, mm. so you have that going on. Remember, they tried to sell Obama's seat and the governor oh, yeah, what, what, what was arrested. Yeah, yes. you have aldermen that are constantly arrested. You you wow. know, so you have this. You have a history of of the Daly family who controlled Chicago, who was mm -hmm. being paid off by the mafia. That's public news. So wow. this is a city that, that has been soaked in corruption for so many years. And then mm -hmm. our black and brown communities adopted the techniques from the Irish mafia, from Jim uh, Peloso and uh, from, from Jim, oh man, I'm messing up his name. He'll come back to me. And then mm -hmm. Al Capone and mm -hmm. then just the Peluso, Jimmy Peluso. And mm -hmm. then uh, Al Capone. And then it just kept passing down. You remember that the, the, the Valentine's Day massacre, which is one of the most known uh, violent massacres in American history where uh, gang members dressed up as police officers and executed uh, the people. That was that was put together by Al Capone. So wow. this history has moved from what they call organized crime to mm -hmm. to uh, to the to the to the uh, organization, the gang organizations that are running it today. And so it's it's so saturated with mm. issues, even food shortages. They closed mm. 50 schools. Rahm mm. Emanuel uh, closed 50 schools in Chicago. Mm. That then, these, then these students have to travel through all these gang areas and they're getting shot on school buses and shot as they travel to school. So now you have kids just opting out of going to school. So, wow. so you have this plethora of problems after problems after mm. problems. And mm. it's not a welcoming city. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying that they will tell you that, you know, Chicago mm -hmm. is not that welcoming place for outsiders. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of infighting amongst mm. organizations there. So so when you add that, it's the perfect recipe for for the problems that it's dealing with now as as the leading place. No, no place has more funerals than Chicago in America. Oh my lord! Do we have any stats, Demas, on uh, like you know what what are they averaging funeral funeral wise per day or per week or per month or per year? Well, as it relates the, to young people. Yeah, well, the the, the stat is seventy seven thousand people. Seventy seven thousand. I want you to think of thirty thousand people or twenty thousand that makes up the 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 garden. You know, mm. when it's full with a mixed mm. play. We're talking, mm. let's double the garden and add mm. on 7,000 more. That's how oh many people Lord. have just been shot. You know, we're climbing towards 11,000 killed since mm. Afghanistan and Iraq. And neither one of the, you add uh, Afghanistan and Iraq together, it doesn't even make up 8,000. So we're seeing this wow. kind of violence on our grounds. You know, Leek's funeral home was the busiest funeral home in the country mm. and still and still is so what you can do i mean that that just says it there i didn't ask him you know how how much he's making and that because that would have been mm -hmm. an embarrassing mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. but their funeral home is featured in the film and his voice mm -hmm. is featured in the film telling mm -hmm. you what's going on of how the killings have changed at such a rapid number Wow, that is just heartbreaking news, heartbreaking news. And it's systemic. I mean, so in in, in light of this, uh, after you did the film and had time to reflect, 
what could be a possible inroad solution to try to turn this whole thing around? I mean, you broke it down so well. Uh, this is years of investment in the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say, I, I, I would say one. They have mm -hmm. to, they have to um, bring in a different uh, type of policing. You know, okay. um, because there's a tension where the African community doesn't want the police. You know, they're mm. we're talking about defund the police. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and but restructuring is is probably more reality. And if you really read defunding, uh, there are some at the extreme of saying we don't want police at all. Uh, mm. I don't think I've found a community that, that wants to go that far when you talk mm -hmm. to the people that live there. Mm -hmm. But there needs to be also a relationship building between mm -hmm. the citizens that live in these communities and the police department. So that, you know, we can realize that that whole um, telling pe telling on those that give information can come to an end that people can know, you know, mm -hmm. get to hear who are the shooters mm -hmm. that cops could feel comfortable enough in some degree mm -hmm. uh, to do stakeouts and have enough resources to be there when these shootings are happening, mm -hmm. you know, and be able to. To remove, there are some people, mm -hmm. as as harsh as this may sound, mm -hmm. there are some people that are serial killers in Chicago that mm. they want to kill every single day. They want to shoot every single day. And oh without those people going to jail, being told on or being removed, uh, we have a real problem unless they uh, convert to a religious organization or group you mm -hmm. know, like I like I did, I came to Christianity, but, mm -hmm. you know, people turn around in all different kind of kind of ways. Uh, but they you know, that's what worked for me. Jesus mm -hmm. changed my heart. So Amen. that's what I that's what I tell other shooters and mm -hmm. criminals like come to Jesus because I don't know any mm -hmm. other way to tell them to go. You know, that's what I know. So mm -hmm. we we have to see these guys either get rescued, get changed, mm -hmm. turn of heart or something. And um, and then, you know, the list goes further. This next generation has to be mentored to not be shooters, have to mm -hmm. be supported to not grow up wanting to be shooters. But right now mm -hmm. it's a revolving door where the mm. next generation is looking forward to getting clout, being recognized, mm. having their mm. name out there. So some people are starting to shoot at age 12. What? Yeah. Yeah. Age 12. And our beautiful sisters are joining these gangs, not wow. sometimes knowing what they're getting involved in, and they're mm. being killed. Age mm. 14 and 15 years old, being oh shot and Lord. killed. Chicago just had that happen this weekend. And then mm. the girl's like, oh, it was an accident. But the way, every, the way everything is looking, uh, uh, I'll, I'll leave it to the courts. Yeah. Mm. This is absolutely heartbreaking. And, you know, here we are in an era where uh, there's a lot of us who are awoke, if you will, and we really want to move forward. And to hear this news is just it's just really troubling. But we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Talk with Tara. Presented by African American Woman in Cinema, right here on Rudy Radio. We need some vigilante crew. I'm gonna tell you what we need. So these little old jokers running around who shoot us, you gotta take them all, uh, snip applies, cut their shooting fingers off. Chicago is back in the national news. With 74 people shot and 12 fatalities, this is now one of the bloodiest weekends on record. Citizens of the city can't let their kids walk on the street, be on the front stairs even. It's a little boy that I know, he's three, four, five years old. He's been shot twice. There were so many bullet holes, and she was bleeding from everywhere. Violence is the manifestation of our public policy feelings across the board. And this this is sad, man. 11-year-old is shot. Boom, 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 boom. And a 17-year-old is shot in the face and dead. I'm thinking to myself, I could be the next one to get shot, dead. 
anywhere right here. Gone. An angle Forever. It is war. And that Taliban war is even worse. Facts. It is worse, man. I am Madame Francois, and I'm introducing my new luxury skincare brand that's available to you at an attainable price. Discover my beauty secrets, luxurious, effective ingredients with proven results, and a price tag that doesn't break the bank. Come indulge with me at lesmadamefrancois.com. Hi, I'm Dan O'Shea, Executive Director for Maureen's Haven Homeless Outreach. It is our mission to support the homeless in our community. We provide an emergency winter shelter program, a day center, and support services to help the homeless in our community. With your help, we can continue to provide services so critically needed to the homeless in our community. Please visit www.mornshaven.org or call us at 631-727-683. Welcome back to Talk with Tara. I'm Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema. And today we are talking with powerful filmmaker, director, Mr. Demos. And he was just explaining to us the situation in Chicago. You know, uh, Demos, and we had some, some powerful uh, talent that uh, actually came from chicago when i look at michael jordan i look look at president barack obama michelle yes obama yes. uh oprah did her show there for years you know yes. um, kanye west oh yeah yeah common so many others yeah. wow and and for 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 them to be involved in this murderous activity now at such a young age it's just you know it's just destroying what we could possibly witness as a country but even globally you know talents that would come from from this place i'm just in 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 awe right now at all of this but in watching your film i tell you it had a profound impact on my life and what I'm wondering, I know that you screened it in Chicago. What were some of the takeaways uh, that you heard from the audience? And do you think that this uh, powerful tool that you've created, you and your wife created, could this be used as a game changer to help initiate the dialogue that will bring about change? Yeah, I mean, we named it Chicago, America's Hidden War. Mm. Because, because these facts are hidden in today's new way of doing journalism. You know, we, mm -hmm. when we were coming up throughout the years, journalism used to have a lot of longer takes, more focus, mm -hmm. return back to the story. But mm -hmm. uh, journalism around the country is, is three to five minute segments. And uh, so now podcasts like yours, documentaries mm -hmm. and more are mm -hmm. are what's going to be the, the the historical pieces that are going to stand the test of time so i'm mm -hmm. so honored to be on a podcast like this because this show is going to outlive uh the all of us you know mm -hmm. as it goes forward mm -hmm. so what what's profound when people see it in chicago is is a lot of them really never heard uh the gang perspective, the gang meetings, mm. um, the level of which we we did those. Like we didn't at the bottom of most documentaries, they would have called 
these guys gang members. But mm -hmm. um, these are gentlemen that are born in, the, in a gang area. Everyone that's born from old block is already stamped from birth that they're going to be uh, a, 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 a disciple, you know, uh, wow. a gangster disciple, a black disciple. You know, you grew up there. That's where Michelle Obama was born. And mm -hmm. uh, you come up there, you're a disciple. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you have no idea what you're born into, but you're there and that's it. And people are going to start shooting at you. So, mm. so this is this is the problem. So when people are seeing this, it's really an eye opener for them. When they hear from the mm -hmm. founders of the mm -hmm. gangs, it's mm -hmm. a big eye opener. We bring them into a gang meeting. When have mm. you seen a gang meeting on national TV? Never, because wow. they won't allow you in. But mm -hmm. they allowed us in because mm. of my background as, mm -hmm. as a drug boss who connected mm -hmm. with, with drug bosses down there. So, mm. you know, so we had incredible access, you know, mm -hmm. but on the same time, the goal is to raise the army from around mm -hmm. the country mm -hmm. so that people would be excited to travel into Chicago and do something about the problem. We have seen that happen for us in the mm -hmm. South Bronx when mm. they made when they made all those movies Escape from the Bronx, mm -hmm. you know, when they made uh, 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 Serpico and when they mm -hmm. made um, Fort Apache and these kind of movies, mm -hmm. missionaries from around the country saw those movies and said, I want to go be a teacher in the Bronx. I want to wow. go and be a doctor in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. I want to go and work in the ER department in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. and, and by them being teachers and principals and so mm -hmm. forth, it changed the culture mm -hmm. of the Bronx. So mm -hmm. we're hoping that people will see this movie and say, you know what? I want to go live my life out helping those kids in that community. Though mm -hmm. That level of sacrifice will make a huge, huge difference and impact. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And I agree with you. You know, one thing that film... Uh, has it possesses the power of imagery that is forever etched in human minds and it can last for a very long time and it's very influential so to see uh, what you have put together on a big screen with such a strong message I think is 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 penetratable <laughs> influential and can definitely uh, do a lot of good, at least spark some reflection in the mindsets to get minds to consider. Because like you just said, it's like some of these folks have never been privy to this information and now being privy to it and seeing it in such a responsible way uh, that's coming from a perspective of, listen, we got to, this is a state of emergency. We got to address these things. Otherwise, we're going to lose a whole generation. I mean, I don't want to. I, I mean, I'm already saddened by the fact that I'm hearing young people 12 years old shooting. But if this if nothing will be done about it, then it's going to start five years old, four years old. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's what we have to really um, be alarmed about to prevent that. At all costs. We, we, we have a shot in our movie, a scene, mm -hmm. sorry, mm -hmm. a scene in our movie mm -hmm. where, where an eight-year-old, you know, is sitting with all the drug dealers who are smoking weed, what? who are out there hustling, and he's sitting on the porch. What does that do for him? That is grooming him. Mm. That's grooming him mm -hmm. for to, 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 to be a shooter. We have mm. an 11-year-old boy who says he's scared. You know, and he only feels safe at school or at church. Mm. We have another kid that says he's so frightened at night of being shot that he has chosen to sleep on a hard floor under his bed. Mm. I mean, he doesn't even feel safe sleeping in his house because of the bullet holes that he saw are at the mm. level of his bed. I oh mean, this, Lord. we cannot let this continue. And mm -hmm. I hope that somebody hears this. I hope somebody of great power and influence in our country would hear this and say, you know what? Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. We got to go in there. 
if they need 10 million or 20 million to hire the right mm -hmm. people to do the right work in those areas, let's do it because it, it can be solved. It can, mm. there's 1500 something shooters. Mm. There are millions of us, mm -hmm. you know, 156 people I heard took the vac 156 million people. They said are vaccinated in the mm -hmm. United States. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. uh, there's 1500 of them. We can't meet them, love them, help them, get them out of there. If mm -hmm. we got to first want it bad enough and mm -hmm. Chicago, America's hidden war. I hope when they people see it, that they want it bad enough to do something about it. I hope so too. And you know, we are doing everything in our power to promote, get folks to see it because we want to encourage dialogue that really in our hopes will produce change. And it begins with us, Dimas. It begins with us. Yes. And you certainly, you and Tiffany have stepped up to the plate and met the challenge. And we certainly salute and applaud you both for doing that. And the only thing that we can do is come right behind you both and be supportive and help push that message to save yeah. lives. Basically, that's what this is all about, you know? Yeah. So, wow, 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 wow. Um, I want to kind of talk about uh, this uh, directorial name you have, Daylight Supreme. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> so, so Mr. Daylight, uh, how did that come to be? I love it. <laughs> so, you know, I was, I was known for many years under the name of, of Daylight Supreme. Oh. And when I, and when I, and when I changed to the new person that I am today, Mm -hmm. Many people said, you know what? That name makes sense because mm -hmm. you are the light. You are mm -hmm. the light of the chosen one. Mm -hmm. So so when I say Dimas Salaberrios, when people Google that, they can find out that I used to pastor for 17 years. Mm. So when I'm when I'm on set at the absolute pursuit of excellence in every minute, in every second, <laughs> I can't I can't be the sweet gentle, you know, <laughs> uh, Little House on the Prairie kind of pastor guy. <laughs> though, though I wish I could be, but I have to, I have to sometimes throw on that, that, that directorial hat and say, mm -hmm. yeah, I know you think that's impossible, but mm -hmm. it is not impossible to get that shot. And we're going to mm -hmm. go up on that doggone bridge and we're going <laughs> to hang off this <laughs> and I'll be hanging right with you and we're going to get what we need to get to make this happen. So, you know, I, I, I still wear the pastoral hat in the sense of I will not ask anybody to do anything that I wouldn't do myself, mm -hmm. but I also push the crew and we cast mm -hmm. the vision from the very beginning. We said this movie is going to be on the Oscar list for best documentary. And mm. I said, and this is how we're going to work it. And anything mm -hmm. that was subpar, I said, mm -hmm. we are not going to shoot this. Mm. We're not going to shoot this. Oh, mm -hmm. but it's just a documentary. I said, it's just a documentary to you. Mm -hmm. To mm -hmm. me, this is this is fine art. This is high art. Whether yes. everybody recognizes it right now or not, I watched many works uh, of Austin Wells and the greats that people didn't recognize what was being done when it was being done. But right now, years later, they're like, this is the greatest film that was ever made. Now, I want this film to be considered the most significant documentary ever made in American history. And it will. And we'll be right back with Talk With Tara. I am Tara Renee. And Talk With Tara is presented by African American Woman in Cinema right here on Rudy Radio. We need some vigilante crew. I'm going to tell you what we need. So these little old jokers running around who shoot us, you gotta take them all, uh, snipper plies, cut their shooting fingers off. Chicago is back in the national news 
with 74 people shot and 12 fatalities, this is now one of the bloodiest weekends on record. Citizens of the city can't let their kids walk on the street, be on the front stairs even. It's a little boy that I know, he's three, four, five years old. He's been shot twice. There were so many bullet holes, and she was bleeding from everywhere. Violence is the manifestation of our public policy failings across the board. And this this is sad, man. 11-year-old is shot. Boom, 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 boom. And a 17-year-old is shot in the face and dead. I'm thinking to myself, I could be the next one to get shot, dead, anywhere, right here, gone, in Inglewood, forever. It is the world. And that Taliban war is even worse. Sucks. It's even worse, man. It's all about humanity. More Cosmetics and Skincare was formed to empower all women to feel great about themselves for more than just a moment. When it comes to a flawless complexion, skincare is the key. Vera More Cosmetics and Skincare is for women of all ages and skin tones. Be the more fabulous woman you were born to be. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed our lives, but one thing that hasn't changed is the need for routine vaccinations. Vaccine-preventable diseases like measles, flu, and pneumonia haven't gone away and can cause serious illness. Protect yourself, your family, and those around you by staying current with routine vaccinations. Talk to your healthcare professional and stay up to date on all recommended vaccines. Learn more at www.nfid.org. Welcome back to Talk with Tara. I am Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema. And today we are talking to the fabulous Daylight Supreme, who is just blowing this show apart. And we thank you so much, Mr. Dimas, for being here. Oh, it's, it's an honor <laughs> to be. Anytime I can be with you is a, a great privilege and honor. <laughs> well, thank you. And the, and the feeling is mutual. Thank you. So I, I want to ask you a few a few more questions uh, for the audience. One, who are your your cinematic, uh, cinematic inspirations? Um, my favorite cinematic inspirations is, uh, you know, number one is is David Lean. Mm -hmm. um, he did Lawrence of Arabia. Oh yeah, uh, the, the River of Kwai. Mm -hmm. um, what and all all his passage to India. Um, mm -hmm. All of his work are, are masterpieces. He he's the biggest influence on Steven Spielberg as well. He you know I love I love big landscapes. I love big mm -hmm. cities. I love. Mm -hmm. I, I love everything to be big and large and make you feel like you're in a gigantic movie, you know? So that's how we, <laughs> we wanted to film it. Um, mm -hmm. we, you know, he, he really, really has an impact on me. Stanley Kubrick has a huge yes. impact on me mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. area of his focus on details mm -hmm. and not rushing, you know? Mm -hmm. We shot 500 hours worth of footage because mm. we did not want to rush. We worked mm -hmm. hard as a crew and mm -hmm. and you know, we were totally committed. I was on a hunger strike in the wow. movie. I didn't eat, you know, wow. uh, up, upwards of 30 something 37 days, you know, mm. and had to be had to be taken to the hospital at one point of that journey, you know, to to stand for our people. But I, mm. all those people inspired me to have a high level of commitment Mm. And, and also to uh, do cinematography and filmmaking at the highest level. I want mm -hmm. to be 
I want to do the best documentary that's ever been done. Mm-hmm. And, and we went for it with every bit of muscle and strength that we had. So mm-hmm. when you go to see uh, the film, I mm-hmm. hope you feel that. And if you really mm-hmm. know filmmaking, mm-hmm. uh, you 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 will see and, and you'll see little hints of of even respect to our mm-hmm. past greatest cinematic moments mm-hmm. from, you know, uh, the start of cinema to now is mm-hmm. is featured in the film. That is amazing. I did not know you went on a hunger strike. You know, to, to shoot a film while eating takes so much energy. And to do that, wow, uh, blessings to you. Blessings to you. That's amazing. Nice. So, yeah. uh, Dimas, there's going to be people listening from every area uh, across the country and listening to the way that you so elegantly spoke down the state of emergency as it relates to Chicago. What are some things that people who don't live there, what could they do to be of assistance to try to change this direction? One of the first things they can do is uh, post about the movie. Post, Mm -hmm. I just heard Tara Renee talking about this movie, Chicago, America's Hidden War, and then put hashtag AMC theaters, hashtag Mm -hmm. uh, Regal theaters, Mm -hmm. hashtag cinema, you know, things like that, or hashtag Chicago America's Hidden War. Mm -hmm. Um, All all those kind of things help on the social side because those theaters, we need, you know, we've been having great limited releases. Like we've been in five cities, but only one day here, one day there, one day. Now some of them are starting to open up to weeks. But when, when they see large numbers of people talking about something on online Mm -hmm. with those hashtags Mm -hmm. they will let it spread around the country number two Mm -hmm. you can go to chicago's with the s chicago's hidden war.com chicago's hidden war.com and you can enlist we're going to be you know there are people that can record a teaching that kids can watch in chicago a Mm. uh, not a podcast but like a master class for people in Chicago, you can donate to after school programs. Wow. We have unsung heroes on there that mm-hmm. you can support that are going that are on the ground, expanding their 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 work to different uh, drug blocks and gang blocks, mm-hmm. you know, and and also, you know, you can uh, go go see the movie, capture it in your heart, capture the DNA mm-hmm. of it. And you, when you enlist, you can even enlist. Say, hey, I want to, instead of me going on a trip to uh, Guatemala this year, mm-hmm. I want to go into Chicago mm. and volunteer my time for, for a week or help out with something for a week. Mm-hmm. Those are the steps that it's going to take. And it's going to take our country focusing mm-hmm. on this. And, uh, and it'll make a difference. That is powerful. Okay, so... Audience, you heard, this is what we, this is our next step plan of action. So this is what I am encouraging everyone to do. It's doable and uh, it will have a profound impact. I I thank you so much for sharing that. Dimas, uh, for those listening, what words of inspiration can you leave them with as it relates to all that you have done, went through, experienced? And where you are today, what words of encouragement can you give to our listeners? I want to first say Washington, D.C. was one time the murder capital. Mm. Uh, Los Angeles was one time the murder capital. Mm. New York City was one time the murder capital. Mm. They are are not the murder capitals anymore. Mm -hmm. So Chicago is not impossible Mm -hmm. to, to experience a turnaround and a shift. Mm-hmm. I also want to speak to you as as a listener. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if you would have told me five years ago that I would have two films, one that was done with with Steph Curry, Viola Davis and mm-hmm. Mariska Hargitay as producing partners and that I would have this other film that uh, first time directing made it to the Oscars list. Mm. Um I wouldn't say I wouldn't believe you, but I would definitely be like, 
wow, I, I that I am shocked. You know, mm. I would I'd be shocked if that if that happened. So mm -hmm. we're we're just getting started, and you mm -hmm. can just get started. I mean, the black women of cinema and what <laughs> Tara Renee is doing. These are groups. If you're a woman listening to this, you can reach out to her. She is a great support of every last person. And I want to tell you by listening to this podcast on a regular basis, you are growing in the craft of filmmaking. It takes mm. hours and hours of listening, learning and practicing. And you can do what we do. Most people don't want you to know that, but mm -hmm. it is the truth. You mm -hmm. can do anything that you put your heart and mind to. And in my in my faith community, I say it this way. If God wants it to happen, it's going to happen. If you were born mm -hmm. to make movies, you will make movies. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, and, and I believe that there is a great help that I get from my faith in, in, in Jesus that helps me do this stuff that I do. And, mm -hmm. you know, others do it in their way without mm -hmm. faith and with faith. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that's them. I'm only mm -hmm. going to tell you what works for me. And, uh, <laughs> and I would be a dead man if it wasn't. If it wasn't for Jesus, this guy put a gun to my head, a hitman <laughs> caught me, put a gun to my head in the back of the building and pulled the trigger. And every wow. time he pulled the trigger, all I had was a prayer in my mouth and it went snap and the bullet didn't come out. Snap. Wow. And the bullet didn't come out. Snap. And the bullet mm. didn't come out. And uh, and it, that same gun worked on others. So oh my God. that's why I followed the God who saved my life. Amen. But uh, And I just hope the best and wish the best for you. Ooh, that's powerful. Thank you so much for that. Uh, uh, I'm assuming that the people uh, on the website uh, to get the tickets to see the film is on your website, the list. Yes, yes, there. And they can also do Fandango and and they can also go to CineLife.com and uh, they can check movie theaters near, near, near you. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's a new age coming out of COVID-19, you can call your theater and say, I want to do a watch party for this particular movie. And they can wow. order the movie. So we're in a new day that mm. we have never been in before. That's amazing. So um, Dimas, can you please give us your social media handle so people can <clears throat> follow, like and follow you? And also the sure. website address again. Yeah, so you can go to... Uh, um, on, on social media, it's Chicago's Hidden War. On Facebook, Chicago's Hidden War. On Instagram, Chicago's Hidden War. On Twitter, uh, my personal is Pastor Dimas NYC. That's Pastor D I M A S N Y C on, on Instagram. And on Facebook, it's just my regular name, Dimas Salaberrios. And you can find that. Or as you look at the screen of the podcast. So, uh, yeah, we'd love for you to follow us. I think I'm kind of maxed out on Facebook with friends, unfortunately. <laughs> but on Instagram, we, we, we can go for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, let's build Instagram up. That That's excellent. So what's next, uh, Dimas, after Chicago? Any Anything in the works that you can share publicly? Yes, yeah, so we're doing a film on the LAPD. Wow. Um, yeah, so we, we start filming that uh, in the next couple of months. So mm -hmm. we're, we're excited about that project. Um, Street God has mm -hmm. been uh, picked up by Anonymous Content. Uh, so they, they, are, they already wrote the script and, and now uh, working on uh, finding the team that they want to put together to make that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, 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 we have many things in the making on the way and, mm -hmm. and everyone is talking to me and throwing other projects my way to, <laughs> to direct. And, uh, so, so we'll, uh, hope that we make the right choice on the next mm -hmm. film. <laughs> well, I think you yeah. will. Cause so far it's been fabulous. You've been blowing up this cinematic path like none other. So I'm just so proud of you and Tiffany. I hope I get a role in Street God. I'm putting that out there. <laughs> Come on, Tara. I don't know where the time went, but they're telling me that we have to go. Dimas, thank you so very much. 
for being our wonderful, powerful guests and for sharing all the gems that you shared with us today. We so deeply appreciate you. Thank you so much, audience, for listening to Talk with Tara. I'm Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema Organization. You can visit us at www.aawic.org. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Talk with Tara is made possible by Rude Rangers Entertainment. Our creative director is Rudy J. Breedy. Please don't forget to like and share this episode with as many people as possible. We sincerely appreciate you joining us today and wish you continued peace, blessings, and prosperity. See you on the next episode.